Well, there she is, boys and girls. That's a Cummins 12 valve sitting in my 72 Chevy. Uh, the mounts that I made this morning, they line up perfectly. They hold the engine right exactly where I wanted it. All that work paid off. I haven't welded them in yet. It's just everything's hanging in place and it's sitting here. It's straight. It's true. It's perfectly centered in the frame. I'm extremely stoked about it. Uh, I don't think I could have asked for it to come out better. You know, it just it worked out extremely well. I'm uh, going to have to do just a little bit of a fill weld down here, which I knew I was going to because I'm running about a half inch of taper per foot. So that's going to be just a little bit over uh, 5 sixteenths of an inch there that I'm going to have to fill in with the weld. So that, that won't be a problem, though. I can I can burn that up no no issue at all. going to have to get in there, grind the frame back, take a few more measurements, figure out where everything's got to be. But, I mean, that's, that's the final position of the motor there, it looks like. Now, uh, I do have the big fan up here in the front, and the big fan's going to be coming off the motor. Um, I'm going to be running a set of electric fans. Let me find a tape measure here, and I will show you how much clearance we've got to the center of the core support. Now, the, the center bolts in the core support are going to be at the center here. So from the center of that, we've got just about six and a half inches right there. And uh, I'll probably push it back just a little bit more, give me about six and three quarters. That is where I'm shooting to wind up. Now, if we go in here to the core support that's sitting in the bed of my truck, of my other truck, of one of the many I have sitting around in here. I'll turn on some lights so we can actually see it. We'll go over here and I've got the core support. Now what it is that we want to find out is how much room behind the core support bolts do we need. So that's pretty much the center of the bolt there. If you look at six and three quarter inches from behind that, you can see we're going to have lots of room up there. So let me see if I can get a good shot. Yeah, there we go. We'll just go about where six and three quarters is. And that tells us what the distance from behind there. So as you can see, I'm going to have a lot of room for a radiator and a good set of electric fans. And I could probably get away with running the uh, original fan if I wanted to, but I much prefer the electrics. So this is where we're at right now. I'm going to kind of show you how my setup is. As you can see, I've got a level on the front. i got a level there. i got a level on the frame right here. Anytime I'm doing something like this, I'm running all the way around the truck with levels, looking all the way around it to make sure that everything is square and level and true because this is the, the times that it'll really bite you in the butt. And uh, doing it the way I'm doing it is the best way to do it if you're going to be mounting a uh, engine into a truck because you, know, you could take measurements all day long and then weld the mounts in, but there's nothing that's going to tell you how it's going to fit in the space like using the engine itself as a jig. So if you're going to do any type of work like this, you definitely got to have a good picker. you got to have a good way of picking them up, and uh, that will help you get everything in there. And as you can see, it's going to fit nice and easy. Um, over on this side of the frame, you'll be able to see we're going to have to do a little bit of clearancing. Um, what's going to happen? I've already got the marks on here. This is going to be cut out here. This is going to be cut out here. I'm going to box down the whole side of the frame here just to move it over a whole two inches. The inside frame rail is going to remain. I'll fill all the holes in it. And I'll just make it as stout as humanly possible. I'll probably add a little bit of a plate work to the inside of it too just to make sure that it's done up real well. Then the uh, factory air conditioning compressor can go back there. But Again, you can see, you know, if, if you look at the angle here, we've got plenty of room for the hood to fit over it. I'm really happy where it's sitting. And uh, the other issue that I was a little bit concerned with is, is the exhaust going to fit down through there, but we've got plenty of room for the exhaust as well. So I don't, I don't think I'm going to have any issues getting this truck to run and run right. Um, you know, I was, I was a little bit concerned about clearance between the uh, oil pan and the pumpkin, as you can see here. But it looks like we're going to have plenty of room there. Also, you know, keep in mind that the, this thing is going to get a different set of springs, which is going to open that distance up a little bit more. Um, I was a bit worried about the angle of the drive shaft as well, but as you can see looking down there, uh, see if I can get a good angle on this, you can see it's going to clear the drive shaft as well. Even it's going to have a couple inches that can come over if it starts to articulate. So I'm pretty happy with how the setup looks right now. You know, that Dana 60 is a pretty big pumpkin, and the Cummins naturally has a huge oil pan. Uh, if it really does start to become an issue, I will probably build a custom oil pan with an offset sump. But uh, that's that, that'll be seen somewhere on down the road. Or I may just cut the corner out of this one and weld a corner into it that allows it to clear there. But I've, I've got plenty of time to worry about that further on down the road. Uh, the next big steps are is I'm going to get everything marked up here. I'm going to get it welded in. Um, I'm going to take my measurements here. And everything looks where it just, like it was lining up just like I wanted it to because... I was planning to have the back of the engine mount right at the center of that bolt hole, and as you can see, it's it's down there right about dead nuts on it. So I was pretty happy with that. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to mark it out, tack it in there. And uh, once I've got it tacked in, I'm going to check it one more time, and then I'm going to burn them in. I'm going to set the motor in, I'm going to bolt it down. And 
And then a little bit later, I'm going to come in here with a piece of box tubing across the back of the frame there. I'm going to run a couple of bolts into it, into the bell housing. And uh, what that's going to allow me to do is it's going to allow me to set the weight of the motor on down there because I won't have my parts. Um, I ordered a uh, bell housing from Advanced Adapters, and I won't have that bell housing for a couple of weeks yet. So I need that to mate up the NV4500. Real quick, while I've got the door open, I'll show you. That's the uh, NV4500 right there. It's a 99 model out of a truck that I scrapped. And then the rear end that I'm planning on using right now is this uh, P3014 bolt here. Um, the truck does have the original HO72, which is a good axle, but the, it's, they stopped making it in 1972, so it's really hard to find parts for that axle because there's not a whole lot of people that are running these one tons right now. Now, another option that I'm kind of considering, I'm not sure yet, it's been kicking around in my brain, is I have this 93 HD. Now, anybody that knows their trucks will know that a HD is the heavier version of a one ton. It's actually a medium duty truck. If you look at how thick and heavy and beefy this frame is here, that's a, that's a pretty healthy frame. You can't really see it right now, but uh, up underneath here, there's this big, giant Dana 80 in there. This thing runs 19 fives. It's a true 10 lug. I've been seriously considering moving this axle underneath the truck and running the 19 fives. Um, haven't decided for sure yet. I mean, some of the advantages would be is a lot longer tire life because of the 19 fives. You know, the, you can get 100,000 miles out of a set of 19 fives if you take good care of your truck and don't do a lot of stupid stuff with it. So we'll see. Um, if I do, I'm going to be running some Michelin tires. They have a, a super sipe they created for running on the ice road. It's, uh, I believe, the XZA3 or the XZA2. I can't remember the model number, but it's a really, really good tire. Or excuse me, no, it's the XDS2. It's the XDS2. And uh, I've been considering running those. They're a really nice tire. It's also got the 10 lug on the front. If I do that, I'm going to have to make a custom set of hubs for the uh, Dana 60 there. But I don't know that that would be too much of an issue. What I was going to do is just uh, take the... Uh, bolt pattern off of it right now and just cut it off of there and then go back in and make a new piece to go on there that has the 10 lug bolt pattern and then just uh, heat it up and then freeze the hub and slide it on over, press it into place and then uh, weld it from the back side, chuck it up in a lathe and then trim the weld to where it was smooth so it wouldn't uh, be out of balance. Been considering doing that, I'm not sure. The, uh, but we'll, we'll see, that, that's a future project, that's a long, long ways off from now. Anyhow, uh, if you haven't already, please subscribe.